Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And I've actually got one of these cans over here. We're going to be discussing um, how to apply it to a potted um, fruit tree. And to the left of me, I've actually got an agami kumquat, which is a very popular um, New Year's gift within the Asian culture. And then I've got a dwarf nagami kumquat as well. Um, we're going to be discussing that shortly and we're also going to be discussing also fertilizers of choice. Um, I did a video already and I'm just going to reiterate this point one more time um, that you got to decide where you want your elements for your food to come from. It's either your food's going to come from a chemical source or your food's going to come from an organic source. Um, both the orga organic and the inorganic um, chemicals all have nutrients that are in these. These are the elements of the periodic table. We've got hydrogen and helium, um, pr products that we actually need for our plants are borom and, and carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and um, sulfur is important and magnesium is important. Um, but the point is you want your, your elements to come from a chemical source or an organic source that are ultimately going to end up in your plant. Most importantly, it's going to end up in your food. Um, so for me and my family, we've actually um, choose to eat organically. We grow organically. Um, and another important reason for actually um, growing organically is to make sure that you're actually feeding the soil organisms that will ultimately feed the plant. Um, you're trying to create that symbiosis between the two um, that will actually enrich and improve and stabilize a healthy plant for a longer period of time than what a chemical source can do. Um, before we get started, I like to put on my gloves because we are going to be dealing with um, products that have manure in them. We're going to be dealing with products that have, take a look at that hummingbird over here. Perfect. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to be dealing with products that actually have manure, that have bacteria, such as E. coli. We're going to be dealing with um, products that are actually enriched with bacteria and fungus as well. Um, so before I begin, I always like to put on my gloves and I highly encourage all of you to do the same. Um, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be potting a plant into this pot. Um, the first step when actually preparing your, um, your soil for your pot is to make sure that you've actually got um, something that will help with drainage near the bottom. My pot already has soil if you want to come a little closer and take a look at what's going on inside here. Um, I've already got some soil. You can see that it's got quite a bit of sand. The sand actually helps get the water from the surface down to the bottom. But if I were able to go all the way down to, towards the bottom, what you'll, what you'll see is actually layers of rocks that I've actually used at the bottom to help with drainage and to get the water out of there. Um, one of the things that kills a lot of trees is, is rot. And when the water actually stays in the pot, um, that actually kills trees far more than actually having a plant being dry. Um, so we've got a lot of soil in there, which ultimately goes down to rocks. Um, a mistake that some gardeners use is actually putting wood chips near the bottom. Um, and I highly encourage people to not use wood chips as their um, choice of medium for the bottom of the pot. Predominantly because the wood will rot, it creates um, what's called anaerobic respiration, which is where it actually um, robs the soil of the oxygen and it actually harms the plant. Um, another thing that wood does if it's in, in, your, um, in your pot or even in your ground, if it's under the plant, it actually takes a lot of the minerals and nutrients, including nitrogen, out of the soil. Um, so that's another reason to not be using wood chips in your pot and again, not underneath your plant. It could be used as a, um, a ground cover to help retain moisture, but never to put it underneath the plant or into, at the bottom of your pot. Um, the first thing we're going to do to improve the soil here is um, we've got to decide on what kind of soil to use. And here I've got a Grow Molds 3-in-1 um, compost that I picked up from the garden center. It's an organic product. And then I've got this one over here, which is potting mix. And a lot of people say, what's the difference? Which one do I pick? And, um, and obviously we've got a pot, so you think, oh, potting mix is the right choice. But most people don't know why. Um, and the reason you want to go with a potting mix for um, your pots is because it's actually enriched with more um, moss typically and it's got more perlite and it's maybe enriched with vermiculite. The point is that it has more things in it that help retain moisture because with your potted plants you're only going to be watering them whether it's every day or every other day or, or a few times a week depending on the type of plants. Um, what your potting soil is going to do is help hold the water. But if you're putting a potting mix in the soil in your ground, um, that'll actually be absorbing too much water and actually causing the soil to rot and actually damaging the plant life in that area. Um, so you never want to put potting mixes in the ground. Potting mixes are for your pots. If I were to just use a regular compost mix for my pots, then it, the, the issue would be that my pots would actually dry out prematurely, whereas a potting mix would actually keep the soil moist longer. 
Um, so now that we discussed the difference between potting soils and non-potting soils, we're gonna add our potting soil to the pot. So I'm gonna just open that up. Just gonna add a little bit down here. And I'm just gonna mix that in. There's already potting mix in this, in this pot. So you can see I'm just mixing again the potting soil with the native soil that's already in there. I'm also gonna add, as we discussed, you have two choices. You can either um, add um, a chemical source fertilizer, which we, um, which we do not recommend, as this does not feed the soil organisms. And, you know, and this, these elements that are in here come from a chemical source. The preferred is using something like this. And this is um, Espoma Organic Citrus Tone, Citrus and Avocado Food. And this here is derived from, and I'll try to read the ingredients here. Um, And it says here, derived from feathers and um, chicken manure and bones and alfalfa meal and um, it says sulfate of potash um, and magnesia. So a lot of micro um, nutrients are in here as well, which will help um, these plants to a wonderful start. So I'm just gonna add about a half a cup of this product to the, to the pot and mix that. This is gonna, um, formulate the bottom and encourage the roots to actually go deep. So we're going to open that up. I'm just going to set some of the soil here on the ground. Now give me a little bit of filler to use. And then now we're going to decide, are we going to plant a standard size Nagami or a dwarf Nagami kumquat tree? Um, as you can see, the dwarf one has got plenty of branches. It starts very low. Um, this plant is um, most likely grafted onto a trifoliate um, orange um, rootstock, which actually you know, stunts its growth and keeps it growing slower. Whereas this one here, more likely than not, is grafted onto a um, sour rootstock. Um, and if you take a look here, you can actually see where the graft is. I'm actually gonna bring this to you. But you can take a look right here. And this is actually the sour rootstock, and then it's grafted onto the Nagami kumquat. So they basically grafted the fruit of choice onto a rootstock that'll actually allow this plant to have the vigor and the growth that we want. Um, so in deciding what to put in the pot, most people would go with a dwarf or a semi-dwarf tree for a pot. Um, if you were to pick between dwarf and semi-dwarf, I'd always encourage semi-dwarf so that you have the vigor. Um, whereas a dwarf tree would usually be a little bit, a lot slower growing. It'll always remain a compact plant, only growing a matter of inches a year. Compared to something like this that may grow up to a foot to two feet a year. Um, Nagami kumquats are actually um, pretty slow growing. So even if you get a few inches or six inches a year, um, the point is it's going to have a lot more vigor being it's on a standard rootstock. And what I'm looking for here is a plant that's actually going to be a little overhead and kind of fill in this space. This plant will actually grow um, anywhere from about six feet to 12 feet and it can always be pruned um, to your choice. But I want the plant to actually have the vigor um, so it can grow into the shape that I want it actually um, created to rather than something that would be slow growing and would have to wait years to accomplish. Um, so we're going to plant the standard um, Nagami kumquat tree. First thing I'm going to do is remove the, um, these constricting ties that the um, nursery growers actually put on the plants when you buy them from the nursery. So we're going to remove that so the plant can actually, um, I always say breathe, but it's not breathing. It's just to allow the, the, the flow of the, the waters and the sugars um, into the tree. So we just remove those ties. We're then gonna remove the stake because we're gonna put our own stake into this plant. And then we're gonna pick that up here. And here we go. First thing I like to do before I put it in is see if there's any, um, any coiling of the roots at the bottom. But even though it doesn't, I'm still gonna, still gonna remove a little bit of the soil near the bottom just to basically let the plant know that you're no longer in a pot. And now we're gonna um, put it into our new larger size pot. As you can see here, it had a lot of soil on the very top. As I pulled it back, um, there's still no roots. So it was probably covered with too much soil even from the nursery. You wanna make sure that the roots are very close to the surface where we're gonna actually create the soil level here. Um, so the roots are here. And what we're gonna do, I gotta get this a little bit lower in the ground. So I'll set that there. And we'll try that again. And that'll be just perfect. I'm gonna mix that with. 
here we go. So we're just going to press around the plant over here. Make sure that it's straight. And the last step that we're going to do here is, um, is we're going to add a product such as this, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. As you can see, um, this plant is exposed to quite a bit of sunlight. There's no canopy on this plant yet. Um, so this here is basically going to keep the plant from sunburn and help give it the best chance possible. So the first thing we're going to do here is... Take this product. Gonna mix it here, and as you can see, I had this um, pre made right before the video, so we're just gonna mix that up. And um, this product actually has an organic paint in, in it, as well as neem oil and castor oil, which help um, protect the plant from wood destroying organisms, as well as sunblock, as well as. Um, Another issue is sun scald. And the last one is if there's any um, gnawing rodents, but we're not gonna have that issue be enough here in the pot. So we're basically gonna take this, and um, today we're actually gonna be using a green color, and just applying that as a coat. This product comes in green, brown, and white. And as you can see, this is what the green looks like. go up as high as we can. We've just covered the trunk. We're going to try to get as many of the branches that are exposed, um, these lower branches. And we're done. This tree is now protected from sunburn. And we'll have a great sh shot. All of these exposed surfaces that have been pruned in the past will also be protected from wood destroying or organisms such as termites and beetles from getting into the tree as well. The last step with Ivory Organics is um, I've got here a bottle of water and we're just going to add a teaspoon of white Ivory Organics to this bottle and it's just a water bottle here. And we're just gonna shake that up and apply it to the leaves. And this here is basically a foliar sunblock uh, to protect the plant. And now we've got it coated with the three in one tree guard paint, um, diluted with one to two teaspoons per gallon in that spray, um, color white. And now we're gonna add the steak. We're just gonna push the steak Right alongside, this is a metal stake that's covered in a plastic vinyl um, to keep the uh, metal from overheating and protecting the tree. And then we're just gonna take um, our string here and we're gonna tie the, um, the tree to the stake. And the point I wanna make here is make sure you tie your knot onto the stake and not onto the tree. There's too many times I've actually gone to people's properties where the tree's actually um, being strangled um, by by the knot that's actually tied to the tree. And that here is gonna hold the tree in place. And then we're just gonna tie it now to the stake. But you can see that there's no knot tied to the tree. It's basically only tied onto the stake here. And that'll hold the tree in place in case there's a gust of wind, it doesn't tip it over while the tree gets established and the trunk gets a little thicker to um, support itself without a stake. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm Charles Malky with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to like it and also subscribe down below so you can watch all of our other informative and educational videos. Take care and happy gardening. Bye.